Hello, friends. We are here yet again. I want to talk to you today about a thing that I talk about sometimes, but not enough. That's for dang sure. So I want to talk to you about uh, the power of co-regulation and the power of community on your voice. So this is, hi Bethany, welcome. Um, if you have questions or things you want me to talk about, please put them in the chat, I'm happy to talk about them. Um, but I like to talk about co-regulation community for singers especially because so often we do it in such isolation. We sing in our car with nobody around, so we can't bother them. We sing in the shower, so it has good acoustics, but nobody's really listening to you. It's a thing that we do. We hide our voice away because we're so, we put so much pressure on it to be good. We are so worried about, does it sound good enough to share with other people? But that's the only thing for a lot of us, it's the only thing we do that with. And so it becomes this muscle memory of, oh, no, 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 you don't want to hear me sing. Like, I'm not prepared. I have to be so prepared. I have to like take a class right now before <laughs> I go sing in front of somebody. Um, I need to lean into something else that I, I feel like I have to do before I sing in front of you. Um, but that's not always the truth. It is the truth for those of us that hide our voice away because you're training yourself over many, many years probably to say, nope, my voice is only something that I do for myself. It has to be so much better before I share it. This is the this is how we relate to our singing voice. And so we cement that into our nervous system over many years of not singing in front of other people and not co-regulating with other people as singers. If you're used to uh, being in like a choir, for example, like, hey, Sam, welcome. Um, if you're used to being like a choir, like when you were a kid in high school or, or college or something, you know how powerful co-regulation is and how powerful singing with other people is and how powerful community is around singing. Because number one, you get to talk to people about it who are doing and feeling the same things in their body. Like you can you can ask other people like, hey, does this note feel hard for you? How do you make this happen? And you can coach each other, work on things together. Um, and when you're singing with somebody, it's automatically less pressure on you and less scary. Um, however, the con part of the choir life is that a lot of times in choir situations, there is a lot more judgment um, on the quality of your voice. And there's a lot more pressure um, and a lot more identity politics around the voice and what kind of voice you have. Um, and when you're off pitch, people talk about it. Like, this is not healthy co-regulation, <laughs> right? So we have to learn to start seeing where these patterns come from. So if you were a choir kid, it's important to notice if you have these voices that show up in your head when you're singing that say, you uh, are pitchy, you better not be pitchy because otherwise we're not gonna make it to regionals or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever your choir teacher was focused on or other choir kids, right? Other choir kids can sometimes be the worst, right? Like the Sopranos, so bitchy. That's usually the thing that I hear, right? I didn't do choir in high school, so I don't, I don't know exactly all the tropes, but that's what I've heard is a thing. And the identity politics of choir leads so many people to believe that they are, their, their voice can only do this much, right? I'm an alto. I can only sing from this note to this note. Anything above that note, impossible. I'm an alto. My choir teacher told me when I was 17 that I was an alto, and I can't sing at those high notes, right? That is a lot of just putting yourself in a box for no good reason, right? Oh, I'm a soprano. I can't, I can't sing like low notes. I don't know how to sing harmony. What, what is that? So we do this to ourselves because of this toxic co-regulation format that we were a part of. 
Um, and then that kind of society uh, building spreads into other parts of our life, right? Like if we're if we weren't a choir kid, but you just watch the voice, there's a lot of judgment and like yes that's like the the biggest form of sharing your voice ever and of course there's some nerves involved but then we judge people based on one little wobble that they had we're really we're talking about judging people's voices in there and we are putting people's vocal worth on the opinions of four celebrities whoever's the coaching at that moment and we put all of the weight on their opinions so if they don't get a turn on the voice, for example, they're a bad singer, right? And so we have that stuff cemented in our brains. And there's so much pressure that we put on our voice to sound like the celebrities, the professionals, whatever. And then we get into this, this um, mode, even if we're not a professional singer or if we're not even close to being on the voice, we start doing that to ourselves, right? We start being the celebrity judge in our own brains. And we start thinking, oh, listen to that wobble. I am not good enough. I'm never going to get a four chair turn. I might as well not sing in front of anybody ever, right? You see how the, the snowball effect just happens when these things are perpetuated in society. It's like, choir kid energy times 100, right? That you're doing to yourself, nobody else. So this is why healthy co-regulation with singing is so important because we've learned all of these unhealthy ways of thinking and ways of relating to your voice. So because we have all these patterns, it's gonna take some time. As I say all the time, like we're not looking for overnight fixes here like nervous system work and vocal training is a long game i'm not talking that you need to be in voice lessons for 10 years please don't think that you need to do that otherwise it's not going to be enough for you a year max is great for most people three years is wonderful but six months is also wonderful whatever it takes for you to do to get from where you want to be to uh, where you are to where you want to be and it really helps to have a vocal coach that you like and you trust for that very first healthy co-regulation connection, right? Because if you don't feel comfortable in front of your voice teacher, if they are perpetuating some of these judgments, right? If they're always telling you, nope, do it again. Nope, it was terrible. It was sharp. It was flat. It was gross. Like if they use language that is judgmental instead of um, an invitation to curiosity, that is going to teach you more unhealthy co-regulation and you're never going to want to sing in front of anybody else, you know? So find a vocal coach that is, that knows enough about the nervous system to hopefully not do more damage <laughs> to your stage fright, to your ego, to yourself, big S self. Um, and then hopefully the next stage will be them fostering this space for you to share your voice with other people. If you don't have anybody in your immediate in-person life who is also a singer, it can be really, really helpful to find these spaces through a vocal coach, through open mic nights, um, find other like singers who are at your level on Instagram, make friends with them. It's so important to have besties who do what you do, right? We, ha we have besties outside of our hobby, usually, like usually our best friends do something different than we do. Unless you have done this work before and you're like, no, no, I need singing besties too, right? That is so important to your feeling of safety when you're singing. If you have this group of people that you feel comfortable singing around, you're going to build up your nervous system's ability to be resilient every time. Because instead of if you hit a wrong note, for example, here's the, the pipeline. If you hit a wrong note, for example, if you do that when you're alone and you let these gremlin voices that came from your choir teacher, your mom, your uncle, you're watching the voice for the first five seasons. Like if you let those voices build up over time and you let them like squawk in your ear, every time you hit a wrong note or if some um, wobble happens in your transition through your bridge, that voice is going to be the strongest thing you hear and it's going to drive the bus, right? It's going to be like, oh, 
better not do that again. That was terrible. Ew, gross. You suck. Blah. Gross, right? So that is who you're co-regulating with is your gremlin at this point. Not helpful. <laughs> so instead of that, if you have a vocal coach who can help you train your brain to start to react to the gremlin differently, that's step number one. If you can do this on your own, even without a vocal coach, number one, this is why I talk about it on here all the time, you have the choice to react to those gremlin voices by believing it and letting it run your singing practice and your life for that matter. Or you can say, no, I see you. I see what you are. I, I know you're just trying to keep me safe. I know you're trying to keep me in places that I know and have experienced before because that's what the brain does. That's what the nervous system does. It tries to keep you in places that it knows because it's a prediction machine. If you're going somewhere where it hasn't been before, it has no way of knowing you're safe. And so it thinks bad, right? So everything unknown equals bad. This is where most of the problems in the world come from, <laughs> to be honest. So we have to start on purpose, noticing that and saying, I don't accept that, right? I don't receive that. Thank you, Brent Gremlin, for trying to keep me safe. I appreciate you. Wait outside. I know you're going to come back no matter what, but in this moment I am singing and I get to decide what reactions I have to my singing. And you can start replacing those feelings with, oh, interesting. Okay, that didn't go how I planned. Let's try something slightly different. So you need to be a scientist instead of a gremlin believer. Yeah? Let me know if this is helping. Give me an emoji or something if this is landing to you. And then the second step would probably be to get a vocal coach. After you've done some work around your gremlin, leaning into listening but not integrating what it has to say, then you can start to have a vocal coach. And that is where most people um, find this edge, right? Yes, singing in front of yourself and talking to your gremlin is one thing, but then singing in front of somebody else is a big scary thing for a lot of people if you don't do it, if you're not used to singing in front of other people. So this is where the edge lies. We usually start with like private sessions or, you know, one or two. Usually I have done like some runways in into my group program with a couple of local private sessions because in order for you to start training your nervous system to think about singing in front of another person as okay and not the worst thing that could ever happen if you mess up in front of somebody else you're going to have to find somebody who is safe and who reacts in a way that is understanding of what your nervous system is doing is not going to jump down your throat for being scared or tell you that you're wrong for being scared or feeling that fear. You need this co-regulation in your life. Somebody who understands it, right? If you don't have money for a vocal coach right now, fine, totally great. Find somebody in your life who is an artist, an author, a creative of some sort who shares their creativity on a regular basis. Talk to them about it. These are your co-regulated people because these are the people who have done this work before. Maybe somebody you know is um, an author and they have published a book or something or um, write poems or maybe somebody is like a, an amazing flute player and they play in an orchestra, right? Something like that. Somebody who knows the struggle of coming up against this gremlin and saying, nope, I'm doing it anyway. I don't need to listen to those voices back from my choir teacher, right? And you can talk about these things with these people, hopefully. Not every creative person is uh, a safe person. <laughs> I will admit that fully. But at least there are going to be people who have come up against this block before, um, theoretically, and push past it. And so they can be safe for people to talk to. Because lay people who don't do this are just going to be like, why are you doing that? Like, if it's scary, don't do it. But it's not helpful. <laughs> you want to grow, you find somebody who has grown in the past to talk to and to co-regulate with and to share your fears with. And they will be like, totally, I've been there, I get it. And then they're gonna give you some advice about what they did to get past that. Third step, very important to not stop with a vocal coach. Find your singing besties. Find other singers who are not a vocal coach, who are not like the teacher person in your life, who are not like the authority person in your life, just other people who you sing with who you sing around, who sing on their own, 
uh, you know, who want to sing with you, who want to just jam, who want to just like sing stupid Disney songs in the car with you. People you feel safe singing in front of and who feel safe singing in front of you. And that takes a while to get to if both you and them are not used to this. But it can be so, so, so valuable to when you make that mistake in your voice, instead of hearing the gremlin voice of, oh, better not do that again, to hear, oh my God, that was such a great power, right? Like they give you feedback that is good instead of telling you everything you just did wrong, because that we can do in our sleep. We can do on autopilot, right? That your gremlin voice doesn't need any help to, to do that for you. But if you can find somebody who was like, wow, that was so fun. I love that harmony. It wasn't quite right, so let's try it again. And I'm so excited about it. And they give you the momentum to keep going through the gross feelings. You know what I mean? So this is why it's so important to not be forever in isolation with your voice. And you don't need to pay for vocal coaching or any of my programs in order to do that. You have singers around you. And if you don't, go do an open mic, go meet them, introduce yourself, make some new friends, make some new singing friends. It is totally possible. And if you want this on a bigger scale and a, a more professional level, this is why I created these programs that I have. This is why I created Vocal Magic. I was terrified of doing a group program before I led it. I was like, mm, but I'm not gonna be supervising everybody in every single moment. But guess where the magic lies? In the freaking group, you guys. In the co-regulation with other singers who are there understanding the feelings you're feeling, understanding the gremlin voices, and they're like, oh my God, that's my gremlin voice too. He says that all the time. And then you sing in front of them and they're like, wow, that was amazing. They don't see all the little imperfections. They see the you and the amazing singer and artist you are behind all the imperfections. And that is what gets you real momentum in your singing career. I'm pointing like I mean it. <laughs> it's a little aggressive, sorry. So that's what I want for you. Whether it's in one of my programs or not, I want you to have safe co-regulators and you will know if they are not safe if after you sing with them or after you spend time with them, you feel gross about yourself and you're judging yourself and you're thinking, what else could I have done right or better? You will know if they are safe if you leave the room feeling like, wow, that was so lovely. I need more of that in my life. That was so nice of them. Oh my God, I can't believe they are such a good singer and they want to sing with me. Wow, how cool, right? So it's the discernment of where the safe places are and who the safe people are. And the only way to know is to try. Um, so think of my homework for you today before I go eat lunch is to think of, write down five to 10 people who are either creative people and have pushed past the, the fear of sharing, thumbs up, to, um, to talk to and to co-regulate with about your, your creative pursuit, right? So that when you come up against these feelings of your gremlin voice is too loud, I don't feel ready, I feel like I need to learn more before I do this, they can be your go-to person of like, no, you're ready, go do it, go do the thing. You know, you're, you're so prepared and you're so good. Go do the thing. I felt the same thing before I performed on stage for the first time. Go do it. Maybe that's like a mentor kind of a person, right? And if that's not a vocal coach, find somebody in your, in your community that can do that. Go to more concerts. You'll find them. Um, I say that have, not having gone to concerts in, <laughs> in a while um, myself, but I'm working on it. Number two, go find singing besties, right? Even if you don't join any of my programs, which are designed for this exact purpose, not to do my own one, but even if you don't do that or have a vocal coach, you can still have this co-regulation, which is gonna get you farther than even having a vocal coach for a month will do. I promise you. Like, if you find your group of singing co-regulators who get you, who understand what the gremlin voice is doing because they have that same voice in their head, who have the same fears about their voice, who uh, have been wanting to find collaborators and just haven't. Like this is 
you get to do that. You get to create a singing group of people with no pressure to be good or perform or record or anything, just for the sole purpose of singing together in a safe space. Now this exists in some, some places, like singing circles, um, just make sure it's like, you know, on the level and not like a scam. But like, um, go check them out, find them. They're, they're posted at your local coffee shop. You know, they're on Craigslist. Just bring a friend so that you're, make sure you're safe. But like, go find your singing people. This is gonna get you so much farther because you know why? It retrains your brain to start to look for the good instead of the bad only. When you mess up in front of those safe co-regulators, your brain starts to change and it starts to change from, oh God, that was terrible, gross, I hated that, to, wow, I just sang in front of these people and I didn't get derailed. I made it through the whole thing and I actually really liked these one, two, three things about what I did. It really starts to change your whole biology when you feel like you have a, a safe place to sing and to share your voice. So that's your homework. Write down five to 10 people that can do this for you, that can be in this space for you. Text them today. Make plans for two weeks from now. Hey, you wanna have a singing party at my house? Karaoke party, singing circle, songwriter circle, whatever you want it to be. Make it happen. And if you don't have those people, go out in the world and find them. Be safe, but go out in the world and find them. Or join one of my programs. It's that easy. Actually, it's not that easy. <laughs> I'm not opening the doors for another month or two. However, if you're interested, there's a waitlist link up there right now. You can just put your name on there. No pressure to do anything ever. You'll just be on my list and I'll let you know first when things open. Um, December or January, I'm opening Vocal Magic again. So, here's your homework. I love you very much, and thank you for being here. Um, let me know right now, real quick, what your favorite part was. I'll hang out for a minute. What your takeaway is, and what you're going to go do today. What what part of this homework are you going to take away? Are you going to have a conversation with your gremlin? Are you going to uh, go find a, a creative mentor? Are you going to go find a boho coach? AKA put yourself on my wait list. Are you going to go to an open mic and find some singing besties? Are you gonna text your friend who you already know as a singer and who you've been talking about singing with for months and months and months and you haven't done it? That's a good one. Good, what specifically are you gonna do? And if you're watching this uh, back on the replay, tell me in the comments, what are you gonna do? What's your, what's your plan for finding safe co-regulators for singing? Yes, yes, yes. And just sing. Totally love that, Sam. Yep. Just sing. Just sing. More often. Everywhere. All the time. I was... <laughs> Here's a story about co-regulating. Uh, I was uh, having my phone uh, looked at. I was having them set up a, a, a new SIM card. I was at the Verizon store. Something was playing. I was uh, singing harmony because I have lost all fear of singing harmony that's in my head all the time. I was uh, not that close to the guy, but he heard me singing. He's like, oh, are you a singer? I heard you singing harmony. I was like, yeah, actually I am. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm joining this choir. I'm so excited about it. So we had a whole conversation about, about theater and choir and it was super fun. And all of a sudden this random guy that worked at the Verizon store was now a singing co-regulator, a bestie, right? It's so fun random. Uh, sing in public. You never know who's going to show up. Good. Look for the karaoke machine I want. I love that so much. Yes, yes, yes. All about karaoke. Incredible. Sing with friends in person and jam. Yes. Text them today. Don't wait. Make plans. You can do it. I say this as a full introvert who has had plans to do this for many years. I'm going to take my own advice, you guys. I'm going to text people today. I try not to give advice that I don't take myself. So I'm gonna fix that. Okay, we're gonna do it. Let me know by the time I come back next week what happened, if you made plans, if you found some singing besties. Okay, I love you very much and I'm hungry. I'm gonna go eat and I will see you very soon.